But first, don't believe them. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Now, this is the lovely caravan. Doesn't it sound fun making its way through Mexico to our southern border? Thousands more to add to the millions Biden and Mayorkas have already waved into the United States. Now, I thought about this today. I thought that's just what our public schools, just what our hospitals, just what our homeless shelters, just what our schools and our ESL programs already overflowing need. More people with more problems. If you hadn't noticed, look around you. We're all full up with problems. But of course, you have noticed because Americans are upset and enraged about what this White House has done to our country by opening up our borders to everyone, including the most hardened known criminals. Now, from the beginning, whenever the Biden folks were pressed about the border, they immediately started lying and, of course, blame shifting. Now, first, you remember, it wasn't a crisis at all, said our border czarina. Well, thank you, Kamala. Then it was all President Trump's fault for not agreeing to support what was, in the end, a bogus immigration bill that would have kept the flow coming. Now, all along, they were lying. They were so desperate to flood the country with undocumented Democrats and cheap workers for their donors that the White House completely misread the electorate. Now, with our own eyes, we Americans have seen the damage that the Biden border policy has done to our communities. Yet the administration and its minions claimed consistently that the president did not have the power to stop it. It is false to say that President Biden has the necessary authority to secure the border. The president is trying to make it very clear no executive action would, ha would have that effect. <laughs> we laughed out loud every time we heard it because we don't believe everyone is stupid. And obviously the Trump administration did figure out how to secure the border and make Mexico part of the solution. We've come to an understanding with respect to uh, how those coming to the United States to seek asylum can remain in Mexico during the time of the pendency of their claim. That was such a great time. And now, wouldn't you know, that the Biden staff sent him to talk to Univision to prepare liberals for the once unthinkable. The prospect, can you imagine, of actually turning away large groups of migrants at the border and Biden actually doing it? Well, he'd reportedly invoke Section 212F of the Immigration and Nationality Act that gives the president discretion and wide discretion to block entry of certain immigrants if it is determined they are detrimental to the national interest. It must have killed the website Axios to concede that if Biden really does this, really does it, he would be taking a page from former President Trump, who himself relied on Section 212F to fix the border mess. So what's clear here? What's clear is that whatever they end up doing, it's not Biden who's making the decision. It's his political people. Have you made a final decision on taking executive order uh, in terms of what you want to do at the border? There's no guarantee that I have that power all by myself without legislation. And some are suggesting I should just go ahead and try it. And if I get shut down by the court, I get shut down by the court. But we're trying to work that work through that. that were her, his eyes even open during that interview? They look closed. All right, at this point, I'm not even sure he knows that he's lying, but that was a lie. Of course there will be lawsuits, Mr. President, but given what's happening to the country, there is no federal court. And I'm talking about even ones that are staffed with Biden and uh, Obama appointees. No federal court is going to second-guess the White House making the call that is desperately needed to severely restrict border crossers. Now, the fact is, open borders, though, is their preferred policy. I've been telling you guys this for years. This is their policy. In the 2020 campaign, don't forget that President Trump warned voters that Biden would open the floodgates and, after all, he was all but promising he would do that. We don't need a wall. I would end this notion for the first time in history that people seeking asylum have to be in squalor on the other side of the river. And no one, no one would be put in jail while waiting for their hearing. Should undocumented immigrants arrested by local police 
be turned over to immigration officials? No. Their plan all along was to speed up, not slow down, the mass importation of foreigners into the United States. Now, their compassion was never directed, or their concern never focused on the American people, who at the time, by the way, were still struggling with the COVID lockdowns. It was reserved for the millions of fraudulent asylum seekers. We will institute humane and orderly responses. That means rebuilding the capacity we need to safely and quickly process asylum seekers without creating near-term crisis. <laughs> process them where? The process them into the country. Oh, except not Martha's Vineyard. We never want to send them there, or New York, never there, or Chicago, never there, only to, like, Florida and Texas. But he talked about it. We want to avert a short-term crisis. He and his open borders fanatics created a long-term crisis. But to them, of course, American safety, that's irrelevant. Alvarez, a Haitian migrant, is accused of pushing a 15-year-old disabled girl onto his bed and raping the teen. Police have charged Furman Garcia Gutierrez with aggravated murder. Garcia Gutierrez is an illegal immigrant who has been deported seven times, but keeps finding his way back to Butler County. Irvin Giovanni Alfaro Lopez was arrested earlier this week on several sex offense charges. Now ICE telling us the man was here from El Salvador and has been in a constant cycle of getting arrested, being deported, and then coming back to the U.S. But is he registered to vote? No, just kidding, kind of. Again, never forget that the Biden White House does not care about these tragedies until it begins to hurt them politically. And boy, it is hurting them now. But they're generally unfazed about the issue, so unfazed that they don't even bother knowing the real numbers. How many gotaways have there been since President Biden took office? Um, Congresswoman, I will provide that data to you. I don't have the he number. Said by, by the way, that was today. He's been in there for, what, three years? He still doesn't know. Isn't it his job to know the numbers? If this bunch does anything on the border, Winning in November will be their only motivation. They're not doing it because it's the right thing to do or they want to protect the country. It's because they want to protect their power. And if, heaven forbid, Joe Biden is reelected, I can't even think about it, but if he is, his DHS, I promise you, will simply return to the catch and release policy of the past three years. It's only one presidential candidate in this race with any credibility, with any track record, a proven track record of putting America first at the border, and also, of course, in his economic and his foreign policy as well. And that's Donald Trump, and that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.